welcome to the Orange Snakes weekly video. This week we're very lucky we have the beautiful Laura with us again. So we've got some uh, expert advice with us today. So thanks for watching. Now before we get into the video, we would um, love to ask a little favour of everyone, please. In the comment section of the video, is there any chance you could please just throw us a quick comment about what kind of edible plants you've got in your garden? So we're talking fruit trees, herbs, I don't know, what have you got that you can eat in your garden? All put into cocktails. That's uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> so please, just a quick comment, that would be fantastic. Now, we better get into the video. So, as I said, we have the beautiful Lauda, and today we want to talk about fruit trees. So, um, we were talking earlier this week about the health of fruit trees. You know, at the end of the day, I'm all about eating what's on the tree. So for me, it's like, how do I get as much fruit as possible? And there's more than just plant the tree and reap the benefits of having the lime tree, in <laughs> our case. There's <laughs> a lot more in the backyard. Te technical side to things. That's right. Pruning the tree, as simple as that. But I had no idea until the lovely Laura told us. Yeah, so, so she was <laughs> saying step one, what are we going to do other than buying said tree? Or cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> the step one, uh, first of all, you need to check that the soil is prepared for your uh, fruit tree. So it depends on the fruit tree that you are going to plant. You will need um, a soil with a pH that is neutral or a, a little bit more acidic. Uh, usually it's between 6 and 6.5, but um, it, you can test it. Uh, on your own with uh, just one of these kits of... Or you can buy a little kit to do that? Yes, okay, and you cool. just mix it with water. Yeah. Distilled water. Distilled water? Yeah, yeah. distilled water. Mm -hmm. And then um, you check the pH. And, and you can, if, if it's too acidic, you can add like lamb stone, or if it's too basic, uh, you can add um, compost or sulfur. Mm -hmm. to, to make it um, to the pH that you need. Mm -hmm. So it's very important yes. that your soil is is balanced, I guess, before yes. you actually even go and plant your tree. Yes, and mm -hmm. also what kind of soil is, because the texture of the soil also is going to... to um, Impact to, whether the tree is going to grow well? Yes, because we are living in a tropical area, so that means... This the, is Queensland, the, Australia. Uh, yes. <laughs> the wet season is... is there are big, big rainfall, so you want the soil to, to be able to drain all the water. So you will not want um, a soil that is mostly clay. You will need like a... pretty much all I have in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and, but also you, you don't want a sandy soil that, that it makes all the water and also all the nutrients to, to flow away. So you need um, to balance that and to to have like a mixture of mm -hmm. soil and um, that before you plant the tree. Uh, also, another, <laughs> <laughs> another thing is what tree you want to plant because um, many trees you need a female and a male. Yeah, we were talking about this. It was, it was quite funny. It's so romantic. <laughs> you go and plant your, your tree thinking it's all sweet and lovely. Now, Laura was saying that sometimes you can uh, rely on the neighbour having a tree that your tree might fancy. And then, so then you're all good. What's that dating service for trees? <laughs> but Laura was saying sometimes the trees won't like your neighbour's trees. So you've got to get your own partner that your tree likes. It's a fussy tree. <laughs> Yes, for the pollinization, sometimes it needs a female and a male, mm. but other times the tree serves themselves. So mm. pictures, we say pictures, yes. pictures, for example. self sufficient, doesn't need a partner. <laughs> so you need to to research a little bit about what kind of tree you need to plant, and um, also uh, the trees they get the three three main nutrients from the soil. They are nitrogen. Um, Phosphorum and potassium. Mm -hmm. If you want your tree to grow very beautiful, green, then it will need like it will take the nitrogen. But uh, if you want a big fruit, um, the fruits and the flowers to grow better, it will be it will need like a uh, phosphorum. 
Mm. And the potassium will help to prevent diseases. Mm. So you need to check um, also, you, you can pay someone to do all this research about your soil and to check what kind of, of nutrients is missing or it has too much. Uh, but you can also check once you plant the tree um, with the growth of, mm. of the... So there's a lot that goes into actually thinking about planting your fruit trees. So it's one, getting that soil prepared and ready. Uh, and then once you've got that to a to a balance, that will work for that particular tree and you've got its friends or partners <laughs> in place. Um, then like Laura was saying, it's you then have to monitor the tree growing. Now, we were talking about this because, well, we love edible plants basically. So we, we talk a lot about growing fruit trees and different things. Um, but Laura was then, and, and we, you know, we have tools that we use for these and it's very, very important and we'll often talk about fruit trees because a lot of native trees in Australia are very hardy and they, they cope in many different soil conditions and they cope in many different weather conditions and they can also cope with quite harsh pruning techniques. But fruit trees are a bit more temperamental and they require a bit more love, a bit more uh, nutrition and also special pruning techniques really and the quality of pruning is very important. Um, and then you were talking about how you can monitor the happiness of the tree through its growth. Yes, uh, yes, there are some charts that you can search on Google and, and it depends on your tree, it will need to grow like the new stems from last year to this year, it will have need to grow certain, certain centimeters. If it hasn't, then you, you know that you are missing some nutrients, so you will need to get all, or either fertilizer from a shop that you will need to like less amount or you can add compost but for compost you always will need to add a bigger amount um, to maintain it like big and beautiful <laughs> and, that is, <laughs> and that you need to prune the, the tree to get the, the sun to every branch or to get the air So flow. sun is very important for yes, every branch to receive. Yes, yes. so um, you need to, to reshape the tree actually to make it the best from the tree, like to get the most of the light, the most of the air flowing. So air flow is very important for the branches yes. as well. Yes. Okay. Sunlight, yes. air flow, and food. one more. Food, compost, <laughs> and what was the other one? Love. love. I think it was love. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure your tree has fine. love, make sure it's got good food, it needs good airflow and it needs yes. good light. So with the airflow and light in mind, we have some great products to show you. hand saws, Silky make the best hand saws in the world. They are unbelievable, they are beautiful, and as far as a fruit tree is concerned, they are the only thing they want you to cut them with. So, without a Picky plants. <laughs> okay, <they're> fussy, fussy. <laughs> um, so, the first saw I want to show you is the Gontari apple saw. Now, this is really unique, really special, and obviously designed for apple trees. So, if you have an apple tree, this is the saw you want. Um, this is quite a cool case. It's a beautiful timber case that it comes in, but it's nice and strong, so it holds the blade nice and straight, which is important um, because it is a very, very thin blade. So the curve of this blade is very, very narrow. Now, there's a reason for that, but I'll get to it in a second. Uh, like all silky saws, hollow ground, so there's no surface really to rub against the branch when you're cutting. So this saw, they made it wanting to be a very fast saw, so it cuts very, very quickly, but it also gives the very best cut for the apple tree. So if you look at this closely, the teeth at the back here are actually much larger than the teeth on the tip of the blade, so they graduate to a much smaller size. And the idea with that is you actually cut the branch in one stroke with this saw. So it's not designed to cut big branches, we're talking centimetres, say up to an inch, and you grab the branch, basically start your cut right here next to the handle and then drag it through. Now ideally, by the time you get to the tip of that blade, the branch is completely cut. And having those fine teeth at the front there 
means that that final cut is done with very small teeth, which means it's a beautiful finish. It's not going to rip and tear. So the size teeth are very important with this one, that it gives that beautiful finish cut on smaller branches. But the thinness of the blade as well means you're only cutting a very, very small amount of fibre out of that branch when you do do the cut. Um, so very quick, easy use. Now this is a pull saw only, so the cutting is only happening in this direction. And it's not designed to go backwards and forwards. It's designed to literally be grab, pull, done. Next one. Grab, pull, done. Next one. It's not a back and forward style saw. So very special, very unique. And that one's for the apples. Um, also heading towards, so you have a fully big, beautiful tree, <laughs> like Lara was saying, and you are cutting branches, say about like this a couple of inches, um, then you would probably need a, well you probably, you will need a, <laughs> like a larger size um, saw so you can cut those larger branches as well. So the great thing about the Gomtara, it comes in a several different um, blade lengths as well, depending on how big your branch is. So, Easy locking system, large branches for cutting those large branches as well to just give your, like Lara was saying, just give your tree more sunlight, more air flow through the branches so your branch is growing, or well, your tree is growing nice and beautiful. <laughs> um, it's a great thing also about whoop, this one is if you are cutting, if you are cutting smaller branches as well, it, does, it, whoop, it is available <laughs> in a fine tooth saw as well. Um, say also you do have, you are watching this video and you do look out back and you have a tree that you haven't pruned <laughs> in quite a little bit and you think it is lacking a little bit of uh, sunlight and airflow and your tree isn't just growing as beautiful as it is but it can grow better. Um, the Surugi as well. So the Surugi is a great narrow blade head saw as well. So you are up, you're up like you are pruning up in the tree branches as well, and you are cutting in small, awkward positions. The three so if the branches blades. are really close together, so say you've yeah. got you know, lots of branches like that, and, and your normal saw just can't fit between it, basically. <laughs> That's where the surugi comes Yes, the surugi will literally cut through. Yeah, little, so I'm going to little... use my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get but those. yeah, it'll get through like a narrow spot. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's for the, the forks of a tree or between branches that are really close, hard to get to spots basically. Yeah. So quite unique, but that same tooth style, so that's really important when we're talking fruit trees, yes. isn't it? Yes, and um, I would like also to show you how smooth the cut with the suki saw is. And this, this is one we prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and this... You don't say. <laughs> and this is very important because it, it helps to prevent diseases that the... the the tree when when it doesn't have a smooth finish, um, it can grow bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, so this it's is like little steps for the water to sit, isn't it, and yeah. the bacteria to get into that. Yes, yeah, so having a smaller tooth saw is great for, especially with this particular but it's the style. Yeah, tooth this particular still style as well. It's called it's a mirami. Yeah, mirami? they call so, it mirami too. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so that particular two style is designed to help look after your fruit tree and to make sure it is always big and beautiful. Just like Larry <laughs> we sort of talk about it's like, you know, if you if you went to the doctor and you got a limb cut off and they used a chainsaw. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, Ouch. <laughs> so when you do cut a limb off with a chainsaw, look, super gory as it is, like you <laughs> It's just like, not like going to the doctors. Well. Yes, if you are, go say, we'll put it into another. So you are need a limb removed for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a doctor. You would want your doctor to use the right tools on your limb. It's nice not sharp like, one. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's not like we're going to get a chainsaw, hack it off because at the end of the day you are removing the limb. You don't need it. But if you want it to make sure that it is properly healed, making sure that it has the best future for your Chance of possible. healing over, no gangrene, a nice smooth heal. Yeah. Same um, with the tree. The same with the tree, so using the correct saw for that particular tree is going to help you because that means your cocktails will be... <laughs> <laughs> All limbs intact, so you can make sure you <laughs> But yeah, like Lana said, a beautiful smooth. It nearly really looks like you sanded it, doesn't it? It, yeah. it feels like the branch has had a sand after that cut. So it's really hard finish. to see through a camera. As it well. is hard. We'll do a close up on this. Feel how nice it is. Yeah, yeah. But it does. It feels lovely. Take away from it. So that's the fixed saws yes. that Sinead was talking about. Now those saws also come in a folding version. So 
um, you might perhaps be limited with space in saying that there is not a massive difference. This one is the fixed Gomtari that Sinead showed you that is beautiful, does that beautiful cut. And this is a folding version of this saw basically. So same length blade and you can compare the two. The difference is you're saving the space, so the space of the handle. Um, the upside of a fixed saw is it is actually more comfortable in the hand because of that handle shape. Uh, it sort of is molded to the hand, so very comfortable to hold on to. And also a little bit stronger because the blade's full tang and goes all the way through that handle. It's got more strength and also more flexibility, so a bit harder to break a blade on a fixed saw. But you do have that fantastic convenience of a folding saw of it being a bit smaller. And if you, oh yeah. Handy with actual pockets. They all come with pretend pockets these days. Because have real ones. You, you can slide it into your pocket, uh, which is handy, or you could put um, a string or a D clip on, hook it onto the eyelet of your pants. So that's kind of cool with your folding saws as you have that option. Um, and the beautiful same cut. So whether you like a folding version or you like a fix, the other thing is because the folding don't come with a scabbard, they're a little bit cheaper. So if you're sort of pressed for funds, go with the folding version but always just be a little bit careful because obviously the blade can only go through to the part where it's attached so it's just not going to be quite as strong as your fixed saw that Shanae showed you before but your folding as we said you can have it in the small size or also the large size same beautiful teeth and you can see on the packaging when you go to your store or you order it online that they are designed for fruit trees which is really important but having that long blade gives you the option of pruning quite high so if you've got established fruit trees you may not have realized the importance of the sun and the air and all these factors, so they may need a good prune. So this lets you prune up high while you're still grounded on the ground, not on a ladder, um, and, and to get that tree back into the condition that will help it to grow the best and produce the best fruit. So that's for the limbs, that's for the cutting your big branches off an established tree or your little branches off a new tree that you've planted and it's doing beautifully because of all of the nutrients and the soil and all that stuff. All the fun technical stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then you want to get little branches. Yes, yeah, so you have your beautiful tree. You've done more what you needed to be saying or your technical side of things. But the other great product is the Okart Suni Secateurs as well. So this is great for cutting off those really small branches up to like 2.5 centimeters, something like that. Um, so all the little dead branches. Don't laugh. <laughs> you make me nervous. <laughs> and so cutting out the smaller branches as well, um, just to keep it nice and tidy, nice and trimmed. And the great thing, and you can easily do it with one hand. Well, you probably can't see. So the Okatsuni are also a Japanese brand. Silky is a Japanese brand of handsaw, and Okatsuni is a Japanese brand of secateurs and snips and um, a few other things. all the important bits. Yeah. <laughs> Shanae says, it's just great, just buy it. You'll love just it. Great. Don't worry about the technical stuff, they're just good. Believe it. <laughs> Japanese still, still super strong, cuts through branches. <laughs> what more could you want? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, the, the simplistic design is best. So you get these products and have all the bells and whistles but at the end of the day a basic simple product normally wins and that's what these like are Italian pizzas. Italian pizzas yeah. pizza is very simple same with <laughs> that's right we're all on food today <laughs> so these snips are br I mean these centiers are brilliant and they also come in a few different sizes which is really cool um is this the 180 no. no. So these also come in a much smaller size as well, which is great if you have smaller hands. I tend to have like man hands, but um, if you've got like ladies' hands, beautiful, delicate hands, Sinead's just going to get our smaller pair. You <laughs> will want these. They are beautiful, these lovely little ones here. So it just means that they're not going to open up quite as wide, which is good, much easier for you to open and close them with your fingers. Um, and a bit lighter as well. And as Sinead mentioned, so good because pretending this was my leg, you can open and close them really easily, freeing up this hand to hold, you know, the yeah. branches that you're removing. So and just, you can easily just great. Finish back pocket as well. Yeah. So. Well, you can get cases. Um, Silky make double cases, one oh, that will yeah. hold a little folding saw and your secateurs, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then they do snips. So these are fantastic for when your tree is laden with fruit and you want to get it all off so that you can make a beautiful cake or just eat it or cocktails as she mentioned. <laughs> so not that bad. <laughs> I want the cakes, she has the cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> it will swap. Um, it worked well. Yeah. 
But these snips are brilliant. A couple of reasons is um, they won't pinch your skin. Some snips, when you're using them, they tend to grab this bit of the hand, so these don't do that. Uh, this little latch is great, doesn't get in the way, and it's also really easy to slide on to hold them nice and tight. Yeah. And they're just so strong, it's amazing. You'll see a little video of me on our Instagram account where I'm sort of snipping things that I should not be snipping because these are designed for herbs, flowers, soft stuff, um, you know, picking the fruit off, but I use them on things that are huge and hard and I have not yet broken them. In saying that, my sister has, so they're not indestructible. <laughs> But what you can put them through is amazing. They are just the most incredible little tool and one of my go-to gifts for people that I've got to buy presents for because, yeah, it's amazing. Zip ties, all sorts of things I end up using these for. They are a brilliant, brilliant product. So, Okatsuni Snips. You'll love them. So that's it from us today. We have shown you a couple of our beautiful products which are perfect for fruit trees. And if you use these along with the beautiful tips that Laura has given you, you should have trees that are either looking beautiful, if that's what you've got them for ornamental, or laden with fruit, if that was your other purpose for the fruit tree. Um, and we will see you again next week with a new subject. And don't forget to comment as well oh, yes. below. That would be great. Um, Our question was, yeah. what do you have growing in your yard? Just really quick, if you could go, I've got grapes, or I've got apples, or I've got herbs, or whatever it is you've got. That would be excellent. Just gives us a bit of something to work with to know what to talk to you about. Yeah. And you yeah. could write other stuff if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thanks again for watching. Bye.